Hello and welcome to my YouTube live broadcasting. God bless everyone who just joined in. Thank you for being here. God bless everyone in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Can you guys hear me? Is my sound loud and clear for everyone? Let me know if you can hear me, guys. Give me one. Okay, thank you guys for the confirmation. Thank you, thank you. God bless everyone. Today we wanted to <clears throat> talk about a very interesting topic. And the topic is how Muhammad stole the adopted son's wife, his adopted son's wife, Zainab bint Jahsh. I think this is a good topic that Muslims don't dare to ever talk about or even start to talk about in a debate or discussion with Christians, atheists or anyone else. We are always the ones who need to bring up this topic to show how <clears throat> the Prophet of Islam was nothing but a sick, perverted, hypocrite man who loved to commit adultery and incest with his own family. Today on this live broadcast, guys, we will have the opportunity to understand how the Prophet of Islam, like I said, was a sick, perverted, immoral man who stole married women from their husbands and how he had to abrogate adoption for his own sexual desires. And in this case, for his adopted son's wife, Zainab bint Jash. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat, either about Islam or today's mentioned topics. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer your questions as far as I can. Muslims can also call us live on Skype for a nice and respectful discussion after I'm done teaching. So when I'm finished teaching, I will open up my Skype and only Muslims can call me in on my Skype ID. My Skype ID is the Europe Christian without separation, the Europe Christian. I will open up my Skype so Muslims can call me to refute me about today's topic. So I hope that we will have Muslims who have the courage and the knowledge to refute me about today's teaching. As always, I want to say it's showtime. Welcome, everybody. Before we start, let us pray so that God can guide us in today's teaching. Please pray with me, guys. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies and deception, especially the taqiyah of Muslims. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark world and that we speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet, Lord. We ask this through your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, please give us the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Muslims always say that Muhammad is the best, the best example of mankind. He is the one to follow, right? He's the one to follow. 
Muslims try to copy Muhammad left and right, right? Because they think he is a perfect man. Let us see if Muhammad was actually a good man with morals. Let us see if this guy was truly a prophet, a man of God, or was he nothing but a guy who loved to follow his own sexual desires. Uh, and let us see if he used Allah to help him out when he was busting himself, when he needed Allah to save him from our people around him. Let us go to the Quran and start our teaching of today. If we go to chapter 33, ayah 50, it says that Muhammad is the only guy who is allowed to have sex. Read with me. There's nothing called marriage in this ayat. It says nikah, right? To F anyone. So it says also allowed for sexual intercourse is a believing woman who offers herself to the prophet without diary if he is interested in marrying her. This is exclusively for you. For who? For Muhammad. Not for the rest of the believers, the Muslims, right? So only Muhammad, that was only exclusive for him and him alone, not, not for anyone else. Now ask yourself this question. Why was it only exclusive for Muhammad? Once, guys, in a debate, when I debated the Muslims once, I asked him, if Muhammad was alive today and he wanted to have your wife, your married wife, would you give her to her? Without any hesitation, guys, without any hesitation, that Muslim that I was debating said, yes, of course, I would divorce my wife and I will give her to Muhammad. I said, what? Really? He said, yes, without any shame, without any hesitation. He would have given his own wife to Muhammad. And that's what Muhammad did 1400 years ago. All right? Look how low they have to go for their own profit. Look at this brainwashing, guys. And, and as we can read, Muhammad actually did that. He did that to his own adopted son, Zayd bin Muhammad. He went inside the tent to see his son, Zayd ibn Muhammad. And he found instead Zainab bin Tijash. Jash, guys, means donkey. So she, she was called Zainab, the daughter of the donkey. That was her last name, I kid you not. So instead of seeing his adopted son, Zayd bin Muhammad, he saw the naked Zainab. And when he saw her naked, he immediately said, Subhan qallib al -qulub. So he said, glory to Allah who turns heart. So here, according to Muhammad, he blamed Allah, he blamed Allah for causing him to fall in love with the naked body of his adopted son's wife. Now Muslims, do you believe that Muhammad is a true prophet? Would you give your own wives your own married wives that you love so dearly, would you give her to Muhammad if Muhammad asked you to give, him to, to give her to him? Any true Muslim here? <laughs> if we go to the tafsir, guys, if we go to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, it says, I marry her to you, what you know of the Quran. It was also recorded by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Malik 
Ibn Abi Hatim recorded a narration from his father that Aisha said, the woman who offered herself to the Prophet was Khawla bint Hakim. So the story goes like this, guys. As we read from the Quran, if a woman wanted to give herself without any dowry to Muhammad, there was no limitation for Muhammad. Muhammad could F her immediately. Right? And there's nothing called marriage. This is sexual intercourse. Yes, thank you. It means F her. Right? So Al-Bukhari quoted that Aisha said, Look, the mother of the believers, Aisha, his baby bride, said, I used to feel jealous of those women who offered themselves to the Prophet. And I said, would a woman offer herself? So, you know, Aisha, she, she, she didn't believe what she heard. Right? I mean, this is really disgusting, right? Is, is this woman a whore? Would she, would she so, you know, give herself to F her? To Muhammad? Muhammad can F her? Look at, uh, I mean, Aisha was shocked when she heard about this. And then Allah helping Muhammad, right? Allah always coming to help Muhammad. Allah revealed the ayah, right? And you can postpone whom you will of them and you may receive whom you will. Did you catch it? So Muhammad can F any woman, even married women, their husbands must divorce her and give her to Muhammad. And whom, whomsoever you desire of those whom you have set aside, it is no sin on you. I said, I see that your Lord. So Aisha is saying, look what Aisha is saying, guys, to Muhammad. I see, Aisha is saying, I see that your Allah hastens to confirm your desires, O Muhammad. Ah, now I understand, Aisha is saying. Right? Ibn Abi Hatim recorded that Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, said, The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, did not have any woman who offered himself to him. This was recorded by Ibn Jarir. In other words, he did not accept any of those who offered themselves to him, even though they were lawful for him. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Meaning, if Muhammad chooses to do so. So as you see, Aisha was shocked. God bless you, Rabbi Gomorrah. God bless everyone who just joined in. So Muhammad, there was no limitation, guys, for him. When, whatever, what, what any woman, even if she was married, she wanted to give herself for Muhammad to F her, there was no limitation in numbers or in any woman for Muhammad. Muhammad could do whatever he wanted. Right? Even the laws in, in the Quran were not for Muhammad, only for the Muslims, right? Remember the story of Safiya? Poor Safiya, Muhammad killed her whole family. He killed her father. He killed her young husband. And on the same night, he effed her. He was raping her all night long, all night long, right? Like Lion Richie would have said. He didn't wait for the couple months. You know, there, there is a rule in the Quran. You have to wait a couple of months. Let's say three, four months, right? Muhammad didn't wait. He immediately, after he killed her husband, her father, her uncles, her cousins, her nephews, on the same night he raped her. And when he woke the next morning, he saw one of his companions standing beside the tent where Muhammad was raping Safiya all night long. And Muhammad asked him, what are you doing here? Oh, my companion, what are you doing? He said, I was afraid that Safiya that you was raping basically all night, I was afraid that she would have cut your throat, killed you in your own sleep because you were raping her. Right? Poor Safiya. Poor Safiya. If you go to the hadith, guys, if we go to, had to the hadith, and this is from Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, hadith number 311. And the Arabic reference is book 65, hadith number 4788. It says, 
narrated Aisha, I used to look down upon those ladies who had given themselves to Allah's Messenger. And I used to say, can a lady give herself to a man? Right? Like we showed you from the tafsir. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari. This is not my own words, guys. So, it's Aisha talking, saying, can a lady give herself to Muhammad? A man like Muhammad? So she's basically calling those women whores. Are you going to, you know, give, give yourself to Muhammad so he will F you all night long? Without any shame? Do you, don't you have any shame here, basically, Aisha saying? But then, but when Allah, so the Allah, always Allah, fulfilling the sexual desires of Muhammad, revealed, so Allah revealed the ayah, O oh, you Muhammad, oh, you, O oh Muhammad, can postpone the turn off on who you will of them, your wives. You may receive any of them who you will, and there is no blame on you. If you invite one whose turn you have set aside. This is from chapter 3351. I said to the Prophet, I feel that your Lord, so Aisha saying, I feel that your Lord hastens in fulfilling your sexual wishes and desires, Muhammad. Huh? You see, Allah is always helping you. Allah is the biggest pimp only for Muhammad. Muhammad wants to, to F a woman. Muhammad wants to have sexual intercourse with a woman. Bam! Allah immediately fulfills his sexual desires. And, you, and Muslims are, don't think there's something fishy? You don't think there's something fishy going on with Muhammad here? I mean, Aisha was not stupid. She immediately understood, right? Aisha immediately understood that there's something fishy here. Ah, Muhammad. Allah hastens to fulfill your desires. Huh? Huh? You want a bing bong ding dong? Well, Allah will run for you. Right? So who is, who is basically the slave of who? Allah clearly is the slave, the genie, right? Genie from the bottle, guys. Anyone seen the movie called uh, Aladdin? How the genie uh, is, uh, you know, and you rub the, the, the lamp and the genie pops out? That's basically Allah. Right? You, do you have any wish, Muhammad? Uh-uh, I'm Allah. So Aisha said, Qultu, ma ara rabbuka illa yusari'u fi hawaka ya Muhammad. Aisha saying, I feel that your Lord hastens in fulfilling your sexual wishes and desires. Allah the jinn, right? From the lamp. Keep rubbing it, Muhammad. Maybe Allah will pop out and fulfill your sexual desires, your sexual wishes. Aisha is saying, Ma ara rabbaka illa yusari'u fi hawaka. Look how beautiful the Arabic is, you know. Poetry. <laughs> Aisha's doing poetry here. Aha, Aisha's saying, Aha, I know. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So, you know, Aisha knew. Aisha knew, right? Aisha knew. She was not stupid, right? She knew this guy's a fake. He's a scam, right? Right? Guys, don't forget, please don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button and also click on the notification bell to get notifications when we go live or upload videos. So, <clears throat> for the people who just joined in, welcome and God bless. As we showed you, Muslims, Muslims, if you care about the truth, if you care about your salvation, think. Isn't there something fishy? Aisha knew. Do you know? Don't you think there's something fishy going on here? Muhammad having sexual desires for any woman, even married woman. Bam, Allah comes to the rescue and fulfills the desires of Muhammad.
Nothing fishy going on, Muslims? Really? Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. Muslims, please think. Please leave Muhammad. Drop him. Drop Islam. Stay away from Islam. Please come back to Jesus Christ. Because, God forbid, our living God, our holy God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have never given such filthy, disgusting, or fulfilled such filthy or disgusting desires, sexual desires of any man. God is too holy to, to do that, right? Too holy. God forbid. This is disturbing. This is nasty. This is disgusting. This is an insult for our true God. It's insulting to, towards our holy God to do this nasty things for Muhammad. God forbid. It's a major insult. If we go to the Quran again, chapter 33. Ayah 37, guys, read with me. O Muhammad, call to mind when you said to him whom Allah had favored and you have favored, cleave to your wife and fear Allah, and you concealed within yourself for fear of people. So here Allah, guys, basically saying, you know, you know, Muhammad, you are fearing people. Why? It is me, Allah, who gave you the right to get who? Your adopted son, wife, Zainab, right? When Muhammad saw the naked body of Zainab, he fell in love with her and he said to his Allah, Subhan qallib al qulub, glory to the one who turns heart. So here, Allah is the one who making Muhammad falling in love with Zainab and he is saying to him don't fear people fear me fear him who Allah so when Zaid look what it's saying look what Allah is saying in the Quran so when Zaid his son Zaid ibn Muhammad had accomplished what he would have of her who of Zainab his wife so when Muhammad wanted to have her Zaid when he heard about the story that happened between Muhammad and his daughter-in-law, he wanted to divorce his wife so Muhammad can F her. So it says we gave her in marriage to you. So Allah is causing Muhammad to fall in love with Zainab and saying, Zaid, when he's done with her, we are, we are giving her to you, Muhammad. So Allah, it's all... It's, it has been Allah's plan to give Zainab, his daughter-in-law, incest to Muhammad. So as you see, Muslims, don't you think this is fishy? That Muhammad is creating ayahs in the Quran. So he will get the wife of his adopted son. Right? Because remember, guys, according to the early biographies of Muhammad, People came to him. Muslims came to Muhammad. He said, don't you have any shame? You're effing, you want to have, you fell in love with Zainab, your own daughter-in-law? Don't you have any shame? They came knocking on his door. Don't you have any shame? What are you doing? Don't you have any dignity? So Allah, coming to the aid of Muhammad, helping him, always, Mara Rabbuka Yusara Fi Hawaka Ya Muhammad. Right? Like Aisha said. I feel that Allah hastens to fulfill your desires. Right? Again, Muhammad getting help from Allah. Giving Zainab, his daughter-in-law to him. To F her in marriage. So that there should be no any constraint for the Muhammadans, the Muslims. Regarding the wives of their adopted sons. After they had accomplished whatever they would of them and Allah commanded was bound to be accomplished so from that moment on guys when Muhammad took the wife of his adopted son Zaid bin Muhammad 
From that moment on, adoption was abrogated in Islam. Right? So Muhammad, Muhammad, from that moment on, forbade adoption. Right? To fulfill his sexual desires. Lord of mercy. What about what about barren couples, guys? This really makes me sad. What about the people who don't get children? Huh? They cannot have children. Are you telling me they are not allowed to adopt any child because Muhammad needed his sexual desires to be fulfilled by Allah. So Allah had no other plans than to save Muhammad from the disaster that he created. Using Allah, we know there, in this case there is nothing called Allah. Muhammad needed his alter ego, Allah, to fulfill his sexual wishes with Zainab. Because Muhammad was lusting for his own daughter-in-law, Zainab bin Tijash. And you call this, Muslims, you dare to call this the final and last prophet? The prophet of God? This is an insult to our holy God. Remember, guys, the story of King David in the Holy Bible? David was punished for this, right? When he lusted for another guy's wife. God punished him. What did Allah do? He basically said, hey, Muhammad, it's okay. Keep doing that. <laughs> Muhammad, you're great, man. Keep doing it. I will help you. So God of the Holy Bible, it's an insult for him to lust for another man's wife. And God punishes even King David, right? He punished him for it, but he, Allah, is doing actually the, the other way around. Fulfilling the sexual desires of Muhammad, lusting after the wife of his, of his adopted son, Zayd bin Muhammad. Zayd, the son of Muhammad. You see, our holy God can never be Allah. Don't ever accept the words of any Muslim who claims that Allah is the same God of the Holy Bible. It's an insult to call Allah the same God of the Holy Bible. And the proof is in front of you. Muslims have no clue that they are insulting our God when they say it's halal for Muhammad that he had the right to take his adopted son's wife Zainab bin Tijash. It's an insult in the eyes of God. So if we go to Tafsir for chapter 33, ayah 37, Tafsir by Ibn Kathir again, it says, Go to her and tell her about me, that I, wanted, I want to marry her. So he went to her and found her kneading dough. He, Zayd said, So guys, look what is happening here. Imagine, imagine guys, it's not enough for poor Zayd to divorce his wife. Look how disgusting, how evil Muhammad is, guys. Are you with me, guys? Are you with me? Give me one if you're still with me. So it's not enough. It's not enough humiliation that he divorces his wife and has to give her to Muhammad. Muhammad is commanding her, commanding who? Zaid, to go, to go ask for her hand from her family. So Muhammad sends his adopted son. Look, look, look how evil this guy is. Look how humiliating. Imagine guys, I want to have your wife, God forbid. You give her to me. It's, you say, it's okay, Muhammad, I divorce her, you can have her. And Muhammad asking him to go ask for her hand. What an evil guy. And do you think Zaid will say no? Dares to say no, I cannot do that. Imagine you have to go ask for the hand of your ex-wife. <laughs> oh, 
Look how disgusting this is, guys. Look how humiliating this must be for Zayd to go ask for the hand of his ex-wife so Muhammad can have her. So Muhammad is commanding Zayd. <laughs> oh, man. If this is not evil, if this is not humiliating, then I don't know what evil and humiliating means. Not that, that Muhammad steal his wives, he even asked him to go and ask for his ex-wife. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Ah. Then Muhammad, then Muhammad when he got his sexual desires fulfilled, look what Muhammad is doing guys. Look what Muhammad did in the Quran. Again, from the same chapter, chapter 33, ayah 40, Muhammad is saying, after he got Zainab in his bed, right? After Allah, so called Allah, fulfilled his desires, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men. So Muhammad is saying, I'm not a father to anyone anymore. So from that moment on, Zayd was not considered to be his son anymore. So here, Adoption was abrogated. No one could adopt any child anymore. Right? But he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Allah has full knowledge of everything. Adoption was banned. Exactly, Daryl Cooper. Correct. So, you know, imagine if you are a Muslim. You can't have children. Your wife can't have children. Or you're, you have bad seed, right? You can't get a child. Are you telling me because Muhammad needed his sexual desires, there was no other plan for Allah than to ban adoption? Poor people, man, who are without any child. Poor parents who, or, or poor couples who want to become parents, who love to adopt a child, a child in need. This makes me really sad. Muslims, doesn't it make you sad? Huh? Think, man. For God's sake, think. If we go to the hadith, guys. If you go to the hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, 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 Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 60, Hadith number 305, Arabic reference, Book 65, Hadith number 4782. Look what it says. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. We used to not call Zayd bin Haritha the freed slave of Allah's messenger, except Zayd bin Muhammad. Did you catch it, guys? So, the companions of Muhammad, they always called Muhammad, uh, sorry Zayd, the son of Muhammad. He was called for a long time the son of Muhammad, till the Quranic verse was revealed. Call them adopted sons by the names of their fathers. So, from that moment on guys, when Muhammad banned adoption in Islam, those adopted sons from that moment on, they should have been called from by their father's name. That is more than just in the sight of Allah. So because Muhammad lusted for the wife of Zayd, from that moment on, his name was changed from Zayd bin Muhammad, Zayd the son of Muhammad, I hope you're catching it, to Zayd bin Haritha. All that time, all the time before Muhammad lusting after the wife of Zayd. Subhanallah qalub glory Muhammad saying glory to the one to Allah who turns hearts. So Allah made Muhammad lust for Zainab. Right? So from that moment on adoption was banned in Islam. Muslims 
you think still there's nothing fishy about Muhammad? You still believe that this guy is a prophet of God? We just told you that God of the Holy Bible would have never allowed such disgusting things to happen. It's an insult. God punished King David for that. But Allah is fulfilling the sexual desires of Muhammad. How dare you to call our holy God the same God of the Quran? Don't you have any shame? Do you, don't you have any dignity? If we go to the tafsir, guys, again for the same chapter. An adopted child should be named after his real father. Did you catch it from that moment on? Even Ibn Kathir in his tafsir is saying that. Call them adopted sons by their father's name. That is more just with Allah as we read from the hadith. This is a command which abrogates the state of affairs that existed at the beginning of Islam. When it was permitted to call adopted sons after the man who adopted him. Like we showed you, right? Zayd was called Zayd bin Muhammad, Zayd the son of Muhammad, right? So we showed you from the hadith and we showed you from the tafsir of Ibn Kathir agreeing. Then Allah commanded that they should be given back the names of their real fathers and state that this was more fair and just. How is this more fair and just, Muslims? How is this fair, more fair and just? How? I mean, how is it fair to ban adoption? Isn't adoption, guys, the most beautiful thing that God created? Yes, it is. If we go to the Bible, guys, if we go to the Bible, if we go to Romans 8, please pay attention and take notes. Look how beautiful our holy God is compared to the fake Allah, false moon idol, Allah of Islam. If we go to Romans 8, verse 8, 14 to 18, King James Version, we can read, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Look how beautiful adoption is according to our holy Bible. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You see? This is why our holy God is called Abba, Father. We cry. But Allah and Muhammad are father to no one in Islam. Only this proves that Allah, as Muslims claim, that Allah is the same God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which is a big nasty lie. Our holy God loves adoption and he loves to call us his children. And our holy God is Abba. Abba means father, right? Even in Arabic, it's called Al-Ab, right? We Arabic speaking Christians, we call our holy God Al-Ab, the father, right? Al-Ab, Abba. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This is the true God, not the fake Allah. Of Islam who is nothing but a fake solid idol a moon idol that the pagans of the Quraysh used to worship together with Allah al -Uzza wal Manatis three bird idols and if children then heirs heirs of God and join the heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So as you see, adoption is a very beautiful thing according to our Holy Bible, right? But in Islam, Allah needed to ban adoption only and only for the sexual desires of the fake prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Nasty fake prophet who only created Islam for his own sexual desires and only Muhammad had no limitation in women and if he even 
wanted to have married women, there was no limitation for him. He could have them, right? Like I said, <laughs> I really debated a guy, I kid you not, on Paul Talk before. And I asked him a really serious question. Are you going to give Muhammad your wife if he desires for her, if he lusts for her? He said yes, without any hesitation. Look at this brainwashed Abduls. Brainwashed. Right? You must be brainwashed or you must be very evil like Muhammad to follow such a fake man. Right? Now, let us change the topic a little bit, guys. Let us change the topic. I really try to be political correct, guys, you know? I don't want our videos to be uh, too much of an 18 plus, right? So here you see a woman basically giving milk to an older guy. Does this remind you of anything, guys, in Islam? <laughs> what do you think uh, that our next topic will be, guys? Huh? Take a wild guess. Anyone in the text? <laughs> Anyone? Huh? If you see this background picture, what do you think the next topic will be? Huh? Adult breastfeeding. Clap, clap, clap. My T, you just hit the lottery, sister. <laughs> so, <laughs> if we go to the hadith, guys, if we go to the hadith from Sunan ibn Majah. Hadith number 1944. Great Hassan, which means good in narration, chain narration, by Darus Salam, you know, Hassan, good. We can read the following from Aisha saying, it was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of adult breastfeeding an adult 10 times was revealed. So Allah revealed the verse of stoning and adult breastfeeding and the paper was with me under my pillow under whose pillow under Aisha's pillow when Muhammad the messenger of Allah died we were preoccupied with his death right so they were very busy with the death of Muhammad to deal with his death and a tame sheep came in and ate it ate what the verse of stoning and adult breastfeeding did you catch it so there were ayahs in the Quran that used to talk about stoning of people who committed adultery and adult breastfeeding 10 times, right? Where are, where are those ayahs? They don't exist anymore because the sheep, tame sheep, came and ate them. Do you think, guys, do you think that the whole, this sheep became a very holy sheep when, they, when it ate the eyes of Allah? I think it became very holy, right? Muslims say the Quran is holy, right? Which is, if, which is false. There's nothing called holy in Islam. We showed you the last time a sheikh saying, don't ever dare to call the Quran holy. The Quran is not holy. Muhammad is not holy. There's nothing called holy in Islam. Right? So these verses were abrogated in recitation, but not ruling. So this is why Muslims still stone people who commit adultery, and you have to suckle an adult man so he will become haram to you as a woman right and we were going to show you a video that speaks of this later other hadith established the number for fosterage to be five so according to the islamic sources first it was ten ten times you have to suckle an adult as a woman so that he will become a son your foster son right then Allah made it into five. 
So Allah changed his mind. You know, this God loved to change his mind like a child in a candy store, right? You know, if you, if you, maybe sometimes, you know, if, if someone is a father or a mother who has a children, when you go to a candy store and your child sees a lovely candy, then a couple minutes later, he sees a much bigger and more delicious candy, he will drop that. And this is how Allah is. Allah is nothing but a child in a candy store, changing his mind every time, right? And you call this a, you call this God? Lord of mercy. So there was something called breastfeeding an adult 10 times in the Quran. If we go to a different hadith, we can read that Aisha reported that Sahla bin Suhail came to Allah's apostle saying, Messenger of Allah, I see on the face of Abu Hudayfa signs of disgust on entering of Salem. So, this woman is saying that this guy, he's disgusted of this man who always came to their house, who is an ally, you see? So this guy is disgusted that a man is allowed to enter the house, into our house, whereupon Allah's apostle said. So Muhammad got an idea. Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, got an idea. He said, suckle him, suckle him one. That's my solution for you. So your husband, right? Stop the signs of dis disgust, right? He was envious, right? So Muhammad got the idea, you know, to make it haram for the guy to lust after you as a woman, suckle him. As if suckling a grown-up guy, guys, will keep him from being lustful after you. I mean, if you have really nice boobs, right? You think this guy will become more lustful or will he become a child of yours? What kind of nonsense is this? And Muslims, you think this is a prophet of God? Who will allow such disgusting behavior yeah i know right so she said she she she, she was shocked how can i circle him as he's a grown-up man and look what muhammad's reaction is guys allah's messenger you, uh, the legend, the legend, In, instead of getting disgusted from your fake prophet, you're asking me in what uh, group I'm in on, on Facebook? You carry more about Facebook than your fake prophet who is asking grown-up man to... on women, their breasts. You care more about my Facebook than uh, af about this disgusting behavior asked from your prophet. So Muhammad, look his reaction, guys. Muhammad smiled <laughs> and said, you know, he's just smiling. He was having fun. There's nothing fishy about this, right, Muslims? So Muhammad smiled at the woman and said to her, I already know. <laughs> I know that is that he is a young man. I know. Amr has made this addition in his narration that he participated in the battle of Badr and in the narration of Ibn Umar. The words are Allah's messenger laughed. Did you catch it? So Muhammad was having fun. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. He's a grown-up guy. I know. He has a big beard. I know, but you need to suckle him. I already know, but keep sucking. Right? Keep sucking. Right? Keep doing this. Right? Guys, I don't want to show you, uh, you know, those kind of pictures, right? 
Muslims, nothing fishy about your Prophet still? Are you still convinced Muhammad? I mean, guys, in the text, I'm sure when we are done our teaching, when we finish our te teaching today, you must be really convinced that Muhammad is the true Prophet of God, right? A true Prophet of God. You're convinced, right? I'm sure you'll say the Shahada after we done our teaching, when we finish our teaching, right? You're convinced, right? You will say the Shahada and you will accept Muhammad as a Prophet of God, right? <laughs> just thinking about it, guys. Just thinking about these disgusting activities that actually happened in Islam. Aisha did it. Aisha gave her breast to grown-up men because grown-up men came to see Aisha. She did it. She asked and commanded her sisters to do it, sucking on their breasts, right? Lord of mercy. I made this very big, but this is also a... Um, Hadith, I hope it's, can you see it? I think it's, it looks okay, right? If I made it uh, smaller. Yeah, I, I think now you can read it better. So chapter 36, breastfeeding an adult. Don't say this, this is from the mouth of uh, Rob Christian. I didn't invent this. This is true. And this is Sahih. Do you see it? Sahih Hadith. Right? The chapters on marriage. Abuab and Nikah. Even even the chapter, it's not marriage, guys. There's nothing called marriage. You see the false translation here? It's Nikah and Nikah means sexual intercourse. Sex. They have to cover it up when they translate. So it were it was narrated that Aisha said, Sahla bin Suhail came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, I see signs of displeasure on the face of Abu Hudayfa when Salim enters upon me. Did you catch it? So this woman is saying, you know, my, my, my husband, you know, my husband is really getting disgusted. He's really envious. He's jealous. So the prophet, his solution was, he said, breastfeed him. You know, suckle him. She said, how can I breastfeed him when he's a grown man? Oh, prophet of Allah. The messenger of Allah smiled and said, I know, I know that he is a grown man. He smiled. <laughs> Muhammad is saying. Right? So he did that. Then she came to the Prophet and said, I have never seen any signs of displeasure on the face of Abu Hudayfa after. It. And he was present at the bed of Allah. So instead of uh, helping the guy out, he, it, it, Muhammad made it even more worse for this married man. What a nice solution from Muhammad. Muslims, are you still convinced that Muhammad is a true prophet of God? Or do you think something fishy is going on? Right? Breastfeeding adult males in Islam. What kind of nasty prophet are you following, Muslims? Guys, I want to play for you a video. Let me go to YouTube and play this video for you. Before I play this video, guys, let me tell you what's going on. This incident that I'm going to play for you happened on live Egyptian TV, right? Live Egyptian TV. And this TV host, a woman sitting with a sheikh, a Sunni sheikh, from Al-Azhar, with a, a PhD Sunni Sheikh from Al-Azhar University, who is a very respected scholar of Islam, telling the TV host, a woman, to breastfeed her male colleagues so they become basically her children, so that those women, so, so, sorry, so, so that those men that are working with her will not last after her. So basically they become her sons because 
she breastfed them. And look her reaction. Let me play the video for you guys. فتوى ارضاع زوجات رجال الاعمال للخدم حلال وصوره سعادتك so let me stop for a second guys so this sheikh that you just saw he gave a fatwa right a ruling that women have to breastfeed like this woman that you see here i know the screen is it's an old video or baby basically a uh, bad recording but i'm playing this that you have an idea what the sheikh his fatwa is so he his fatwa was also presented on the daily paper and she invited him to talk about this topic breastfeeding adult males at work even today so that they become unlawful to the women that are their colleagues so let me play the video once more she's shocked shocked زوجات رجال الأعمال أن <laughs> she she is she can't even read it because she's shocked, right? ملخصها إن الزوجة التي تتعامل مع غرباء ويقوم منزلها بصفة دورية فإن عليها أن تقوم بإرضاعهم حتى يصبحون محرمين عليها ويمكنها أن تتعامل معهم بلا حرج باعتبار أنهم أصبحوا أولادها الحقني 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 يا فضل تشئ اللي بيشتغلوا معايا دول أعمل فيهم إيه سوائين وذو <تصفيق> she's saying what should I do to the to my coworkers the drivers I I have to uh... Breastfeed them? Look, look his, his reaction, guys. Look at his reaction. Look what he's, he will say to her. Look at the Sheikh, his reaction. He's smiling like Muhammad. <laughs> Do as it's written in the paper. Yeah, yeah. You heard it correctly. You have to follow what the paper said. Do as my fatwa says. Where, got he, where did he got it from? From Muhammad. And you saw him smiling, right? Smiling like his own prophet. Perfect copy paste like Muhammad. Copy paste. Right? Copy paste. Did you see him smile, guys? Did you see him smile? Let me let me look at look how he's having fun like his prophet. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at the reaction. Do what the would do what Muhammad said basically. Do it. It's Islam. You see? Muslims. Muslims, wake up. Please, for God's sakes, wake up. Stay away from Islam. Drop Islam. This is a religion of God. Guys, this happened live on Egyptian TV for everyone to see. You see, this woman is a Muslim, right? She's a Muslim. She is shocked. She didn't know about it. How many Muslims actually know about this? Right? Yeah, benefit for men. A man who is nothing but lustful for women. Keep sucking. Right? Suckle him. Muslims, you think there's nothing fishy about Muhammad? Are you still convinced that Muhammad is a true prophet of God? Basically, this, this is what Muhammad asked for, guys. Anyone here who loves Jim Carrey? Guys, do you love Jim Carrey? 
let me play Jim Carrey for you. A nice video from Jim Carrey. I hope you didn't see this video yet because I don't want to do spoilers, but anyway. This, this this is what Aisha guys this is what Aisha and her sisters have done to grown up males right Aisha was asking her sisters because Aisha used to visit many grown up males right many sahaba even after the death of Muhammad and her sisters used to suckle grown-up males because there was a huge list of men that came to see Aisha and still today you saw the Sheikh telling the women Muslim women you have to suckle grown-up males so they become Allah for you they become basically your children. <laughs> Jim Carrey is a Muslim. <laughs> uh, Muslims, please think with me here. Please, for the love of God, please think with me here. Do you think, really, after today's teaching, do you really think? That Muhammad is still a prophet. What about because of Muhammad's sexual desires that barren couples, because of Muhammad's sexual desires, Allah needed to abrogate adoption to help Muhammad's desires, sexual desires. So barren couples because of that in islam they cannot adopt children doesn't this make you sad guys doesn't this not make sure you want to cry how sad it must be for barren couples who cannot have children that they cannot adopt children because of this fake prophet his sexual desires Think with me, Muslim, if you really have any dignity, if you have really any shame, please, for your own salvation, not for my salvation, for your own salvation, leave this satanic cult. Stay away from Islam and please come back to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because our Lord, our God of the Holy Bible would have never allowed such filth to happen. God actually punish people who used to lust for married women. He punished King David. And King David later repented. God forbid you are insulting the true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob for following this nasty fake prophet of yours. Filthy, disgusting, satanic cult. Please, wake up. I mean, come on, Muslims. And I'm talking to the Muslims who might know other Muslims. Or maybe, maybe you, I'm talking to you. That Maybe you are barren. Or maybe you know people who are barren. Barren couples who cannot have children. Are you telling me because of Muhammad's sexual desires, they cannot have adopted sons? Be only because Muhammad lusted for his adopted son's wife, Zainab bint Jash. Now, Muslim couples cannot have children? Huh? Hmm? 
This is really sad. It makes me sad, guys. But hey, what can we do? This is Islam, right? Think with me here, Muslims. Right? But we showed you earlier that our holy God loves adoption. Right? From Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 18. That our holy God loves adoption. And he is our true father. Our heavenly father. Right? It really makes me sad and angry. But that because of the sexual desires, adoption in Islam is forbidden. Women. If there are Muslim women watching this. Are you not sad? Are you not disgusted? From your fake prophet? Please drop this satanic code. Please stay away from Islam. Our holy God loves adoption. But your Allah says he is not a father to anyone. And especially to help Muhammad out. Muhammad is called in the Quran a father to no one. Only to fulfill the sexual desires of Muhammad. And if we go to the hadith guys. If we go to the hadith and... This is the last hadith that I want to show you so we can conclude and finish today's teaching. From Sahih Muslim, hadith number 26, 57b, Sahih Muslim, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Always with an echo so Muslims can hear it. Abu Hurair reported Allah's apostle Muhammad is saying, Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. So according to Muhammad, guys, Allah is the one who is causing adultery. Did you catch it? Allah is the one who Allah is the one who made Muhammad commit adultery. Any ustaz? Any ustaz? Is there any Muslim? Uh, refresh the screen, Karyan. Refresh the screen and make sure to put it on 720p for the best quality. Are you with me, guys? Here it says it's good. So I think it's you. Sorry to say, Karyan. It's your uh, internet connection, maybe. Because on my side, it says it's good. Okay. So, according to... Muhammad, Allah made fixed adultery that a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. So you have to commit adultery because Allah made you do that. Allah made you commit adultery. What a disgusting fake satanic cult this is. What a fake idol. Who is saying that he's the one causing you to commit adultery. It's fixed. Allah made me commit adultery with Mari al Qubtiya, right? Remember the story about Muhammad getting busted by Hafza, his, one of his wives, in her own bed on her day? Muhammad having sex with the female slave? Again, Muhammad having sex with his own daughter in law? Allah made him do that. God forbid this blasphemy. If you're saying, shame on you if you're going to say Allah is the same God of the Holy Bible. Shame on you for insulting our God. God bless you, defender of the faith. God bless you too. So the adultery of the eye is the lustful look and the adultery of the tongue is the lynchous speech, the hard desires and yours, which the parts may or may not put into effect. So Allah is the one causing adultery. Subhan qallib al qulub Muhammad said. Glory to the one who turns hard, right? So Allah made Muhammad lust for women. Allah made Muhammad commit adultery. God forbid this nasty behavior. Our holy God will have never allowed such nasty behaviors like that Muhammad. Muslims, wake up. And by this, guys, our today's teaching is finished. So, 
the Q&A session is by this start. So if you have any questions, guys, or we have any Muslim who has the courage or the knowledge to call me, please call in. Our Skype is open. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Ustaz from Indonesia, from Malaysia? Hill slide. Uh, well, according to the Islamic sources, Muhammad had a couple, but his seed was so bad, they all died. After being born, they died. My Skype, is ID, uh, Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype is open. Do we have any Muslim? No, you can't, uh, my friend. You can't call me. Only Muslims, please, today, okay? Is there any Muslim who can call me? If you think you have the knowledge and the courage to refute me about today's topic, yeah, no good seed. Muhammad had no good seed. Not only that, Muhammad had to sit like a lady, like a woman, to pee. I think there was something wrong with his pee pee. Maybe he got an STD from effing all these sexual of our, those sex slaves, right? Muhammad had many sex slaves in his life, like his Sahaba, like his companions. So Muhammad must have had an STD. This is why he had problems with his pee pee, right? So he needed to sit like a woman. Yeah. So his seat was not no good. Any Muslim. Allahu snack bar? Is that the only thing you can say, free hood? Allahu snack bar? Yeah, take a beer, my friend. Take a beer. Take a beer. Beer is good for you. I mean, Muhammad, guys, Muhammad used to drink alcohol day and night. Right? So if Muhammad can have a nice cup of wine, why can't you? Right? Why can't you have a nice cup of wine like Muhammad? Huh? Let me show you guys. Since this guy is trying to be funny, <clears throat> even Omar used to drink. I kid you not. Look at the book. Even the book is called the Book of the Drinks. The Nabid that Omar ibn al-Khattab used to drink had turned to vinegar. We know, you know, when wine, Nabid means wine, guys. When wine becomes too old, it will become vinegar, right? Right? So your Sahaba used to drink wine. And what about Muhammad himself? Guys, what about Muhammad? Did he drink wine? Yes, he did. Again, from the book of drinks, lovely drinks of Muhammad. We prepared Nabid, which is wine, for Allah. This is from Sahih Muslim. Sahih, Sahih. Hadith number 2005b. Aisha reporting. We prepared wine for Allah's Messenger, for Muhammad, in a water skin the upper part of which was tied, and it, the water skin, had a hole. We prepared the wine in the morning, and he drank it in the evening. And we prepared the Nabid in the night, and he would drink it in the morning. You see, Muhammad loved to drink alcohol. So why, why do you Muslims, why, do you, why are you not drinking like Muhammad? Oh, Muhammad changed his mind. Because he became very sick, right? Muhammad became so sick, guys. Right? He became so sick that he was becoming jealous. He became very jealous from his Sahaba, his companions. So he needed to forbid alcohol 
Look at this, guys. Look at this uh, screenshot here that I created. Muhammad, only in the last three years, when he was sick, he became sick from the poison, right? Remember last teaching, guys? Are you still with me, guys? Are you still with me? Right, give me a one if you're with me, please. To make sure that you're hearing this and seeing this. Okay, thank you. So Muhammad, when he became sick, when he, from that poison, at Khaybar, remember? Khaybar, where Muhammad ate from the poisoned meat, he became very ill, and in the last three years, in his illness, he could not drink any alcohol. So what did he do? Because he was very jealous, he forbid wine. Nabi, this is why. And that's the only reason why he forbid alcohol, guys. Muhammad was a jealous guy. He loved to follow his sexual desires. Not only his sexual desires, but also his lust for drinking. Yeah, a very jealous man. And the proof is in front of you. Because Muhammad used to drink, right? His Sahaba used to drink. We showed you, right? But because he became very sick, because of the poison, you know, the, uh, one of the hadith guys says, according to Aisha, Muhammad became so sick, uh, even she saw that he suffered from the poison in his, in his throat. So if that poison affected his throat, do you think you can drink alcohol? <laughs> Three years sober, that's it? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, he also forbade his wives not to marry anyone after his death. Exactly, he'll slide. Muhammad was very, very jealous. Even after his death. A sociopath, a psychopath. Yeah, carry on. Correct. That's nice to hear, Michel van der Vlees. A Dutch coffee shop where you can buy weed 90% owned by Muslims? Those must be the best Muslims, Michel de Vries, and the Fadi Fleece. Sorry if I'm butchering your name, my friend. Or forgive me if I'm butchering your name. Rob Christian, did he forbid being naked while walking around the Kaaba around the same time? I'm not sure about that, but even in the time of Muhammad, people used to go naked around the Kaaba. I, I, I'm not sure. I need to look it up. What basically the time period is. But do you, do you really care about when it happened? Oh, well, you know. It happened, right? It's a true fact. People in the time of Muhammad, even when he was a prophet, people used to go naked around the Kaaba. Lord knows what happened at the time of Muhammad, or even around the Kaaba, right? Let us not go into too much details. We know what happened, right? Right? It was halal, right? And people used to go drunk, intoxicated to the mosque, which they call today Masjid al-Haram. People wasted, going wasted to do prayers, right? But because Muhammad became very jealous, he started to forbid it, right? These people can drink and I can drink? What? Let me forbid it. You know, um, Lydia, don't pay attention to this kid, you know? He's a, he's a troll. He doesn't care about the truth. Every time he comes and saying, Allah Akbar, and that's it. Insulting me. I don't care. Let him insult me day and night. As long as he doesn't insult Jesus, it's okay. Let him, let him stay. Maybe one day, we have hope for everybody, right? Maybe this kid grows up and starts to care about his salvation. Maybe then he will uh, understand. When he grows up, he's now a kid. When he grows up, he will see that Muhammad was nothing but a fake prophet who was lusting for married women, who wanted to have married women. And Allah was helping him. Taking the wife of his own son, Zayd bin Muhammad. What a wonderful prophet this guy was. God forbid this blasphemy. 
right? What did Jesus say? If you lust for a woman, take your eyes out basically, right? What does Allah say to Muhammad? It's okay, go ahead Muhammad. Subhan qallib al qulub. Glory to the one that turns hearts. What did Aisha say? Ma ara rabbuka hawaka ya Muhammad. I see Allah is hasting to fulfill your sexual desires. Uh -uh. Muhammad, I shall say, uh -uh. yeah. And you call this a prophet of God? You really must care about your own self to follow such a fake prophet, a liar and a deceiver. Please, Muslims, if you care about the truth and we showed you today, don't do it for me. Do it for yourself, Muslims. If you care about your own salvation, if you care about the truth, stay away from Islam. Drop Muhammad. Please come back to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And according to the Bible, every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Please come back to Jesus. Do we have any Muslim who has the courage to call me live on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Or are we again out of Muslims? 1.4 billion Muslims who love to always say, tell us, Islam is the fastest growing religion. Yeah. And you are telling me, not one guy from those 1.4 billion Muslims can defend Islam? Refute me, silence me. Right? Refute me, silence me, Muhammad Hijab would have said. Refute me, silence me. And in the meantime, still, according to Muhammad Hijab, Allah is praying on Muhammad. Uh-oh. Any questions, guys? Do we have any questions? Do we have any Muslim? Guys, please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload videos. Any Muslim? Yeah, we are out of brave, educated Muslims. That's really sad, to be honest. Yeah, thank you, uh, admin. Matthew 5, 28 to 29. I say to you that whoever looks at the woman to lust for her, Jesus is saying, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. So according to our Lord in the Holy Bible, if you lust for a woman, for her in your heart, take your right eye, pluck it out and cast it from you. But what does the Islamic teaching say? What does Allah say to Muhammad? It's okay, man, go ahead. It's okay to lust for your adopted son, wife, Zainab bin Tijash. Zainab, the daughter of the donkey. See you, Karen. God bless you. May God be with you, my, my sister in Christ. Yeah, the last prophet. And we showed you the hadith, how Allah is the one causing Muhammad to commit adultery. Allah is the one who made me do it. Do we have any questions, guys? <clears throat> Are you not convinced that Muhammad is a true prophet? I'm sure all of you in the live chat will say the Shahada tonight or this morning or wherever you are. Take beer. Yeah. 
You're convinced, right, guys, after today's teaching? Yeah. Thank you for uh, the link, Edmund. Yeah. That's the hadith that we just mentioned. <clears throat> I think we're done for today, guys. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Thank you for your support and donations. Please keep us in your prayers. Right? And to the Muslims, to the Muslims, please, please think. Think. Please consider in leaving Islam. Staying away from Islam. Don't be afraid of people who might hurt you. Don't fear anyone. Fear the one who kills your soul. Right? Fear the one who are who is teaching you this nasty teaching in your satanic cult. That you will have 72 virgins. That it's okay to not adopt a child. What kind of nasty teaching is this? We showed you today, Muslims, that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet who used Allah for his own sexual desires. He lost it for his adopted son's wife. Allah said, it's okay, you can have her, right? And it's really sad, it makes me really sad for barren couples, barren Muslim couples, that they are not allowed in Islam to adopt children, beautiful children that are in need. Parents who are in need of adopting a son or a daughter, but because Muhammad's is sexual desires, adoption in Islam is forbidden. It really makes me sad. Think with me, Muslims, please, if you care about the truth. I'm sure a lot of Muslims, couples who are barren, are you not sad for them? Because only Muhammad forbid adoption because he was lusting after his adopted son's wife. Only because of that, Allah needed to forbid adoption. What a sad story. Right? Guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. Thank you for your support. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button and also click on the notification bell to receive a notification when we go live or upload videos. Thank you. God bless you. God bless your families and Muslims. Wake up. Please come back to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Denounce Muhammad. Leave Islam. Don't be afraid. Because only the truth and only the truth will prevail. God bless everyone. Jesus is Lord and Islam is nothing but a fake cult and Muhammad was a lost prophet, a fake prophet who only created Islam for his own sexual desires. Thank you for watching and God bless.